Well, the good times just keep on coming. Welcome everyone to After Action Report here on the Call to Action Podcast channel, your numbers recap show for all she wanted matches to keep you caught up in all the action. I'm your host, Megs, and I am going to be breaking down all the matches from this past week, including the pay-per-view event. So spoilers ahead if you have not watched it, but I'm going to be breaking down all the matches, including some instances where we saw team chemistry in some unexpected ways in a number one contender match. Paulo Yama and Ethan Irwin go at it again this week. We had a big week for corruption as well with three matches this week. And the wheel may not be as biased as we thought in the digital age. And history was made in a very entertaining IG title match. And just a side note that I found in my research, the average accuracy in a title match for this year in the IG division is 87%. So some little things to keep in mind as we go along, but let's take a look at what we saw this week and what is it we were looking at. We saw a number one contender match between Lightning Time and Final Exam in the team's division. We had an IG tournament match between Chance Ellison and Moose Haas, a singles tournament round one match between Paulo Yama and Nick Harley, and an IG title match between Mike Kalinowski and Chandra Dominapani. Basic, pretty much the highlight of my week as far as matches go. And then we had the actual Battlefield event, which was the number one contender match between JTE and Chance Ellison. Without further ado, guys, let's get right into all the matches. To start the week off, we saw Final Exam versus Lightning Time. Again, this is the third time that Pollyama has faced off against Ethan Irwin. Starting off, going into round one, we saw that Lightning Time was up by one, 13 to 12, with Liz and Paul getting seven points, Ethan Irwin getting six, and Lon Harris rounding out with five points in that round. Moving over into round two, Lightning Time defers to final exam, who spin away from Oscars and end up spinning Spinner's Choice, where they decide to take a Kurosawa, and they sweep that round for the full 12 out of 12. Goes over to Lightning Time, who spin away from Oscars and end up spinning opponent's choice. And they are given Oscars. Again, this is the digital wheel, but we'll talk more about the physical wheel later on. Into Lightning Time's match, we see that they come away with 11 out of 12 points, checking out a multiple choice once, but not giving away any steals. So final exam is able to gain one, but is now they are tied with lightning time 24 to 24. So again, we see spinner choice and opponent's choice coming up, but just going to show you with this level of competition, you're not necessarily going to be able to give your opponent something that's going to sink them in round two. Though final exam was able to gain up a point to tie it up. Lighting time didn't give away any steals. They had to check down the multiple choice once. Otherwise, they would have also swept this round. So let's go ahead and jump into the rest of this match. We move into the third and final round. Again, they are tied, but due to ranking, uh, Lightning Time does go first with a two-pointer answered by Liz in the 1970s. She was able to get that. It goes over to Paul Yama for his two-pointer, which is in Classics. Bounces back over to Lightning Time with Irwin answering a three-pointer in 1990s. Lon hits his three-pointer in Quentin Tarantino. Back over to Lightning Time who hit their five-pointer in the romance category. And Final Exam is able to answer a five-pointer in disaster films, which means we are tied at 34 to 34. And that means sudden death. And this is where things get interesting. We see that they all answer the first question. But then for questions two through four only, Ethan Irwin and Paulo Yama are able to answer the questions correctly. Liz and Lon getting those three questions incorrect and oftentimes having the exact same answer. Um, the tie is broken with Lon missing question number five, which does give Lightning Time the win with a final score of 41 to 40, where Lightning Time answered 29 of 35 questions for 83% accuracy scored 82% of 50 available points, and final exam answered 27 of 35 questions for 77% accuracy and scored 80% of 50 available points. 
So we saw that even in round one and definitely in the sudden death round, Lon and Liz were on the same page, unfortunately not in the best way possible. Um, and we did see that this was the third time that Pollyama has been beaten by Ethan Irwin in the past few weeks. Uh, the match in IG, the singles match, and now here in teams. But we'll see what else is in store for Pollyama as the week goes on. We move into our next match of the week, which is a round one of the IG tournament. We're back in the cantina with Chance Ellison, the first of the corruption matches for this week, up against Finstock Exchange's Moose Haas. Coming into the first round, we see that Haas is up by one, six to five. Neither of them being able to get a perfect round here. Into the second round, Haas decides to spin first and he takes Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on his first spin. He comes away with six out of 12 available points, checks down multiple choice once, and misses that multiple choice question and a two-pointer, but neither of them are stolen. Coming over to Chance's spin, he spins away from comic book movies and ends up taking Star Wars, where he is able to come away with five out of 12 available points, checking down to multiple choice three times, missing out on two of those questions, and one of them being stolen. So Haas is able to gain two points to now be up by three, 13 to 10 going into the third and final round where Chance hits a two-pointer in Marvel but misses a three-pointer in Transformers and a five-point in Graphic Novels which does give Moose Haas the win via TKO with a final score of 13 to 12 where Chance Allison answered nine of 20 questions for 45% accuracy scored 35% of 34 available points. Moose Haas answered 10 of 17 questions for 59% accuracy and scored 57% of 23 available points. So for IG, this is a relatively low scoring game, neither of them having a spectacular game, uh, partly definitely in due to how the question writers have upped their games for the tournaments specifically. And Chance in the post-match interview hopes to return the favor to JTE, another member of the Finstock Exchange. We'll see that later on in this breakdown. And it was also very fun to see uh, Shannon go up against Ty Lieberman, who was the stand-in manager for Moose. So a lot of fun to see the interaction there. And getting to see the studio cantina matches are always a lot of fun to watch. So Again, nothing too spectacular as far as the numbers go, but a very entertaining match to watch. Let's go ahead and move into the next one. Next up, we see a round one tournament in the singles tournament with Paul Oyama going up against Nick Harley. Coming into the first round, we see that Oyama is up by two, seven to five. He misses that one question in fantasy sci-fi to miss out on the perfect round, but otherwise still being up on Harley's five points. Coming into the second round, Paul defers to Nick, who spins away from sports and ends up taking Reese Witherspoon, where he's able to come away with seven out of eight points, checking down a multiple choice once, but not giving up any steal opportunities. We go over to Paul's spin, where he takes classics on the first spin. And again, he is able to come away with also seven out of eight points, checking down a multiple choice once, but again, no steals. So no change in the score differential. It is still a two-point game in favor of Oyama. 14 to 12 going into the third and final round where we see Nick answer a two-pointer in directors, which now ties up the match, bounces it back over to Oyama, who answers his two-pointer in animated, bounces back over to Nick, who misses his three-pointer in Matthew McConaughey, and also a five-pointer in fantasy sci-fi, which does give Paulo Yama the win with a final score of 16 to 14, where Paulo Yama answered 12 of 13 questions for 92% accuracy and scored 84% of 19 available points. Nick Harley answered 10 of 15 questions for 87% accuracy and scored 52% of 27 available points. I think there were a lot of question marks surrounding Nick Harley uh, coming in from the FCL, having not lost a match in that league, coming into the MTS, seeing how he would prepare. 
He did well with his team's match, but ran into some tough round one and round three questions here inside of this match, but definitely looking forward to seeing what he is able to do as we continue on with the league and hopefully being able to see him next year. Oyama is able to get a win here in this first round, which is big for him. Hopefully we see him continue to have such strong performances into the rest of this tournament. But let's go ahead and see what else we had this week. Uh, this next one definitely was a lot of fun to watch. I am, of course, talking about the title match between Mike the Killer Kanowski against Chandru the Chosen Dondapani. A lot of sparks were fi flying prior to this match and it did not stop once they entered into the match. Uh, if you have not watched this match entirely, please do. Seeing it here in the cantina, it was a lot of fun to watch. But coming into this first round, uh, Chandra is up by one, nine to eight. Neither of them, again, able to get a perfect round here. But if we come into the second round, we see that Chandra decides to spin first, and he takes X-Men on his first spin. Now he's able to come away with seven out of 10 available points, checking down to multiple choice twice, missing one of those questions, but it is not taken for a steal. And we go into Kalinowski's spin, which if you watch the match, X-Men kept coming up. So that uh, wheel definitely was favoring that slice on that day. He decides to spin away from animated after hitting X-Men first, hits animated, hits X-Men again. On a final spin, he is finally able to take comic book movies where he sweeps that round for 10 out of 10 available points. So we see that Kalinowski gains three points to now be up by two, 18 to 16, going into the betting round where Kalinowski spins the wheel again. He ends up landing on DC. Uh, Kalinowski bets three points, Chandru betting two points, both of them answering that correctly. So there is an additional gain of one point by Mike to now be up by three, 21 to 18, going into the speed round, which is also, we're back to the buzzers, where Mike is able to answer the first question. Chandru comes in and tries to answer his questions two and three, but gets both of them incorrect for negative two points. And Mike is able to answer the remaining two questions correct for three total points in that round, which gives Kalinowski a gain of five points with the negative points plus three that he gained. He is now up by eight, 24 to 16, going into the third and final round. Chandru is in the position where he has to answer all of his questions to avoid the TKO, which he does. Uh, a two-pointer in X-Men, a three-pointer in Back to the Future, and a five-pointer in comic book movies. And then we see it bounce back over to Mike, who has to answer a two-pointer in Who Said It and answers a three-pointer correct in Jurassic Park, which does give him the win with a final score of 29 to 26. Mike Kalinowski is able to answer 19 of 22 questions for 86% accuracy, scored 83% of 35 available points. And Chandra Dandapani answered 17 of 21 questions for 81% accuracy and scored 67% of 39 available points. So like I said, this was a very entertaining match to watch, particularly with the managers and the competitors themselves. Those guys are always shooting fire at each other, uh, playing the heel game to perfection. Um, we see that Mike is now the fourth competitor to have successfully defended the IG Championship behind Hector Navarro, Jason Inman, and Chandra Dandapani. So he is only the second one in this modern era to have successfully been able to defend the IG title. And interesting that all both of these guys saved all of their JTEs for the end of the match. So interesting from a strategy standpoint. Chandru had a little bit of a tough round too. I think those X-Men questions kind of crept up on him. And we noticed that the last couple times that X-Men has come up this season, first time around, it wasn't too bad, but the second time and now this third time they have proven to be a bit of a struggle for these competitors. So thinking about X-Men as a, 
Splice and IG, think carefully. These have been getting very tough very quickly. And we see that Chandra just has a tough time recovering and he attempts to there in round four, but gets ahead of himself and has some misses there in that speed round, which was the nail in the coffin with Mike not giving up any opportunities for stealing or any room for Chandra to try and catch up. So again, we see that Kalinowski has now been able to successfully defend that belt and we'll see who comes out of the IG tournament to challenge him at Spectacular. Let's move into our final match of the week, which is the Battlefield pay-per-view event. JTE going up against Chance Ellison, again, in a number one contender match, and we're back in the cantina. Round one, we see that Chance is up by one, six to five, neither of them getting that perfect round. Coming into the second round, Chance spins first. He spins away from the 1990s and ends up taking Mel Brooks. He is able to get away with seven out of eight points, checking out multiple choice once, but not giving away any steal opportunities. JTE decides to take new releases on his first spin and runs into a little bit of trouble where he is able to get five out of eight points, having to check on a multiple choice three times, but not giving up any steals, which this does give Chance a gain of two points to now be up by three, 13 to 10 going into the third and final round where we see that JTE hits his two-pointer in Pixar, but misses a three-pointer 1980s and a five-pointer animated, which does give Chance the win via TKO with a final score of 13 to 12, where JTE answered 10 of 15 questions for 67% accuracy and scored 44% of 27 available points. Chance Nelson answered 10 of 12 questions for 83% accuracy and scored 77% of 17 available points. So similar to what we saw with the Moose Haas match, uh, JTE is managed by Moose. So a change in managers, Bob Gucci is nowhere to be seen here. Um, but something of interest to note during this match, especially in round one, JTE uses two of his JT knees in that first round to try and keep step, but is still only able to come away with five out of eight to nine available points there in that round. Neither of them give up steals, giving even despite the fact that JT had a little bit of a tough time navigating that new releases category. He appeared to have known some of those answers, but wasn't quite confident enough to go for them in the full two points, which the way how tight it was. He didn't want to give up any still opportunities, which was smart. And those round three questions put him in a position where he was not able to force Chance to have to answer any three point questions. And so we see Chance Ellison is going to be heading to New York to face either Ethan Irwin or Marisol McKee for the title. Uh, it's been a long time coming to see Chance get a title shot. So I'm super excited to see how he performs in that avenue. But that is going to wrap it up for this week. Be sure to find all the socials listed in the description of this video, as well as checking out any episodes of Call Live or No Chill. If you hit the notification bell, if you have not subscribed yet, please make sure that you are subscribed so you can be made aware of every time we go live here on this channel, as well as drop any new videos. Also head over to Twitch to check out Twitch on Wednesdays, to see Nat and Dylan bring in guests and just talk about Whatever it is they decide to talk about that day, jump in the chat, give them suggestions of things to talk about. They love interacting with you guys over there. And speaking of which, I would love to interact with you guys. Please make sure that you have hit like, leave a comment, and again, make sure you are subscribed. Comments are gonna be really important on these videos since we don't have the live chat anymore. And also hit us up on social media. You can at me at my personal page, which is listed below, as well as the podcast channels. Would love to get your guys' thoughts on what you thought of these matches anything that I pointed out in these breakdowns that you found interesting or that you want to know more about. I love doing research on this league. So if you have particular questions, leave them in the comments or send me a message over social media. But until next time, for the whole Call to Action crew, I'm Megs, and this has been After Action Report, signing off.